Hello, and welcome to the National Book Festival. My name is Monica Valentine from the Library of Congress. I'm here with Angela Dominguez, whose featured book at the festival is Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. If you'd like to see Angela's presentation at the festival, log on to loc.gov slash bookfest. Welcome, Angela. It's great to have you here. If you're ready, we can begin our conversation. I'm ready. Hello. Okay. Well, first, uh, I would like to know who or what inspired you to become a professional writer? Oh, wow. Well, growing up, I, I always loved reading and I always loved drawing and I thought I just wanted to be an illustrator. But as I became a professional illustrator, that love of reading just I realized I was telling so much with my pictures that I wanted to write the words with them. And I had encouragement from my literary agent um, from some author friends as well, from editors who all said that you're telling stories visually, why don't you write? So I just kept um, going at it. And I think what originally inspired me to want to become a writer, even though I was afraid to admit it, was back in high school. I had a high school teacher who also told me that I was a, a good writer. And um, that was the first time I really heard that from a teacher, especially um, an English teacher, and I was so excited when she said that, that I think that planted the initial seed, and then it was all the other people in my life that helped make that happen. Yeah, a teacher who believes in you is a powerful thing. Um, your most recent book we mentioned was Stella Diaz, Never Gives Up. What inspired you to write that book? Uh, so it was a combination of things. Um, so it's the second in the Stella Diaz series. And I was so excited when I wrote that first character. And I knew that I wanted to write more about her. But with the first book, it's so heavily based off of my background that I didn't exactly know where to begin with the second book. And so what kind of started it all was I realized, you know, Stella loves the ocean. She loves sea creatures. So I went to my library and I started researching more on the oceans and sea creatures. And so that kind of got the wheel spinning. But then on top of that, seeing that there was a growing problem with plastics in the oceans as well, is really what spurred that um, activism in the book. And then on top of that, you know, I wanted to continue Stella's personal growth at, you know, developing her voice, becoming more vocal, um, talking and meeting more friends, starting a group. So it all kind of synced together to help me come up with that story. Okay. Kennedy would like to know, what was your inspiration to write the character Stella? Stella? And Kennedy's from Southside, Virginia. Oh, hi, Kennedy. Um, so it was a combination of things again. Uh, I had done this little character design of a girl with curly hair because I have straight hair and I've always wanted curly hair. So I drew a girl with curly hair and she had a polka dot dress. And so I looked at that little character design for like a couple of years and I was thinking, huh, what kind of story could I write for Stella? Um, and I got the name Stella stuck in my head just because I saw that there were so many kids with the name Stella and I thought it was a pretty fun name. Um, and so it was that character design. And then when I came up with this initial rough idea for the first story and I knew it was going to be a girl who loves sea creatures and who was a little shy and realized like I needed to add more to it and that I needed to be a longer book. That's when I turned to myself and I thought about my personal experiences growing up about being shy, um, having to take speech classes. And so it all came together. And Stella is now so much based off of me, but she's turned into her own little person too. And so it's kind of fun to kind of go back and forth whether I would agree with it or whether Stella would agree with it. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Amy, Amy says, hi, Ms. Dominguez. And then she asks, since you're an author and an illustrator, was it always the plan that you would illustrate your own Stella Diaz books? Ooh, that's a great question, Amy. Um, so I think so, because I initially was going to do it as a picture book. And so that relies so much more on pictures than words. And then when I decided I was going to make it longer and I got um, help from an editor who helped me turn it into a much longer book, because we had worked together before on illustration jobs, it just seemed to make sense for me to illustrate it too. Here's a good question from Charity. Are all of your books bilingual 
My daughter, Madison, has only read about Maria and her little llama, which she loved. Oh, thank you. Um, so a lot of them are bilingual because I think that there aren't enough bilingual books and I also love both languages and I want to celebrate both of them. Some of my earlier uh, picture books were just in English and you know I still love those dearly, but I think uh, there's something special about being able to share both languages. Okay, um, I have a question. Okay. Um, what do you think are the major themes or motives in your books? And how would you say they relate to our world? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I think some of the major themes are confidence, um, because I know that's something that adults, children, everyone can struggle with, and the idea of projecting your voice and that everyone has a voice to be heard, you know, especially with Stella. Um, being a um, immigrant and being someone who is struggling with language also, you know, she hasn't a voice as much as anyone else does. And it's that growth in confidence. And then I, I like to think that my books also are about, especially with the Stella Diaz series, about um, activism and how we all can make a difference um, through the actions that we do and just like little adjustments and being mindful of the world around us, especially right now, as we're seeing there's growing problems with the oceans and climates, like we all need to chip in together and um, you know, together we can make a real difference in the situation. Okay, thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. Christy is writing in with a question from her nine-year-old. When did you decide to write your second Stella Diaz book? Oh, that's a great question. So Christy, you know, I thought the first book was just going to be um, that that was it because I had never written a book that long. It's over 200 pages. The longest the picture book is, is, you know, about 32 pages or 40 pages. And so I did that book and thought, OK, that's great. I did it. Uh, you know, that's going to be the end of it. But that character kept speaking to me and I kept wanting to write another book. So I think it took me about maybe six months later after the first book came out and seeing that people were really enjoying the first book and it was finding that audience that really gave me that extra encouragement to want to write a second one. And thankfully, my publisher, uh, you know, agreed and uh, I was able to write a second and they then they asked me to do a third and a fourth. So the third one will be coming out in January of next year. Great. Uh, okay, we have another question from a guest. Mm -hmm. Are there aspects of your characters that are similar to you or your loved one's experiences? And if so, can you give us some examples? Yes, very much so. Um, actually, it's sometimes a little uncanny. Uh, so with the first Stella, or just the Stellas in general, uh, the brother is very much based off of my own brother. I just changed his name from Alejandro to Nick because I thought it was just like an easier name to say. Um, and then, you know, there are like my friend Chris, who's in the story, who uh, he loves art and he's one of my best friends to this day. And I included him in the book and I called him Chris Pollard and that's his name in real life, too. And then with Stella, um, you know, she loves dogs, especially as you see in the second book. I love dogs. I have a little Chihuahua Boston Terrier mix that I'm obsessed with. And her favorite food are a bon ligas, which are meatballs, and those are my favorite food as well. Okay, so Stella does have some similarities to you. Um, Kennedy wants to know, what does your average day look like when you are writing a book? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, so when I'm writing, I think usually, or illustrating too, I, I wake up early because I'm the most productive in the morning. So I wake up between five and six and kind of take like an hour or so to myself, take care of my dog. And then I get started working around by eight. And then um, if I'm writing, especially if I'm working, working on that first draft, I set certain goals for the day. So I say, I'm gonna write at least a thousand words today. Cause that way it helps keep me on track for writing so that if my book is about you know, 25,000 words, I can get a first draft of that in about 25 working days. 
So um, I do that and I just make sure to take breaks in the day, go for little walks. Um, and then if I'm struggling with writing, which happens to anyone who is writing or doing anything creative, you're going to have your little moments of writer's block or where you're just frustrated. That's maybe when I'll try to go read a great book because that will inspire me with the writing and then it gets me back on track. Okay, more questions about the writing process. Lisa uh, wanted to know what what your process is when you plan and write a book. I think you may have answered some of that, but she also asks, how was writing a chapter book different from writing a picture book? Oh, that's a great question, Lisa. So I think for me, um, with a picture book, because the visuals weigh so much into the storytelling, Sometimes I'm more thinking about what do I visually want to happen on this page? And then I think of the words and I clean up the words to go with it. With writing a chapter book, it's even though there's illustrations in there, I just think about the words and the whole pacing of the story first. So what I do is first I go research at the library and I find out because these books have so much of, you know, so like sea creature facts in there that I want to make sure that there is something that kids can get excited about every time that there's a book. And also these um, sea creatures sometimes become metaphors for how um, or symbols for how Stella is feeling in the book. Like when she's nervous, she wants to escape like an octopus, which they're really great at escaping. So I do that research first. And then afterwards, what I do is I work on a plot. So that's um, basically where I do, I think about the beginning, your middle and your end, and think about all the steps in between and think about how you can just make it like these ideas and themes reoccurring throughout the story. And then from there, you just have to write it. And the first draft is always the hardest part because I love coming up with a plot, but making it actually work and figuring out the words that go next to each other. That is so hard. And then afterwards I get feedback and then I go back and do revising. We'll do that a few times until we got it into a perfectly finished story. Thank you for sharing some of that insight on the process with us. Uh, our guest also asks, when you were younger, what did you think you would be when you grew up and was author on the list? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I have to admit, I didn't really think author. Uh, I knew I wanted to be an artist in some way, um, but I also was very practical and I, I grew up in a single parent home. So a part of me thought was like, I should be a business person or I should be an architect or a graphic designer. Um, but I just, you know, I knew I had to do art and I went to art school and it was at art school that I discovered that you could be a children's book illustrator. And then that all kind of fell into place. Well, that's a great lead in for this next question from Celeste, who asks, what kind of art did you like drawing as a child? Ooh, so Celeste, I, I love drawing everything. I love drawing like cartoons. You know, I would draw like Garfield or Sonic because I wanted to make my brother happy and I did a little drawings for him. Uh, I do portraits. Um, I would also, and this is kind of ties into what I do now, I would write my own little stories and then do illustrations for them too. So I would draw everything, you know, I would even copy from my favorite artists. And that's such a great way to get better at art as well, is by uh, seeing someone else's artwork and either being inspiring or try to do it yourself, especially when you're learning how to draw. Okay, we have a question from Susan. Is there a particular author you would like to collaborate with either as an author or an illustrator? Ooh, there's, there's so many, you know, uh, Hmm. God, I would say, okay, Judy Bloom is one of my favorite authors of all time. To work with her in some way would be amazing. For contemporary authors and illustrators, I would say um, my friend Min Lee, I think he's really talented at writing, and I think he'd be fun to work with as well. I've worked with Meg Medina before, and she's amazing, and I think if we could collaborate on another story now, that would be thrilling. Um, and let me see if there's someone else. I would say probably either Mo Williams or Matt de la Pena. I think both would be, that would be a thrill. 
Oh yeah, those are good choices. This next question is kind of fun. Melissa asks, um, she says, our school has a green team that works to make an impact in our community's environment. What advice do you think Stella would give our team? Oh, good question, Melissa. Uh, so I think it's the idea of, um, in the book, she creates a pledge with her um, teammates or uh, her club members. And I think the idea of working consciously to cut back on plastics on every like you know step of the day basically so like making sure that you're carrying your tote bag making sure that you're using a reusable drinking container um, avoiding plastic cutlery just avoiding plastic as much as possible but knowing that you're just scaling back every day because i think those small changes is what helps make a big difference and then not only top on top of that, encouraging your friends and your family to do so also. Okay, here's another question from Kennedy. Uh, when did you know that writing was your calling? Oh, okay, so probably Kennedy, when I realized that I wanted to start writing um, was in 2011. Uh, I know that because uh, I was an illustrator and I had just I went to grad school in San Francisco and I took a couple years and I was living in Central Valley, California with my mom, getting my career started. I moved back to San Francisco, was teaching a lot. And I really realized that I wanted to make a big push with my illustration career. And it was at that point that I realized that I wasn't particularly excited with the projects that I was getting. And that's when my agent told me, have you thought about writing? And when she said it, it was like all the stars aligned. And I was like, yes, I want to try doing this. And that is when I wrote actually my first book, Let's Go Hugo. So um, it was a later start for me, but I completely love it. And I would say I almost love it as much as illustration, maybe even a little bit more now. Wow. Okay. One more follow-up from Kennedy. Uh -huh. Do you have to do research when you write your books? Definitely, I do have to do research, Kennedy. I think um, research makes it feel like, A, you can add you know things that are interesting tidbits in there, or like for Stella, she calls them conversation starters. Um, secondly, it makes it feel more real, because if you are researching, you learn more about it, and the more that you know about it, the more that you can speak about it confidently or write about it confidently. So I find research is just so much like so important to the process. Okay, here's a question from Brianna. Do you have any book recommendations? I'm curious about the ones that inspired your writing process. Oh, Rihanna. So I love the year of Billy Miller. That was a really big inspiration to me when I was starting to write Stella because I, I wanted it to be uh, um, sweet and positive, but also realistic. And I think that book does a wonderful job of, um, you know, conveying th those um, emotions. Um, other books that I really love are Ramona. It's, you know, Ramona Quimby. It's a big inspiration to me as well. Um, I remember re reading the Cecilia Lee Jenkins books by Susan Tan. Those are fantastic books. And I feel like there's a kinship between Cecilia and also Stella. So I would definitely recommend those. And then let me think, there's one more. Oh, Alvin Ho. Um, Alvin is more anxious than Stella. But again, there's a similarity between the two. I read those books as inspiration for my character. Okay, I've got another interesting one from a guest. Would you want Stella to have her own TV show? Oh, wow. I think that would be really, I, I would, you know, who wouldn't want that? I think that'd be really cool. I just would want to see it done well. Um, but yeah, it'd be really interesting to see it. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, because the characters are so similar and like my brother's very similar. Um, I use my grandparents' names and they're my aunt's names and it's going to be an audio book very soon. And I, I'm just excited to hear like how those voices are going to sound like for my, like my brother, for instance, or for my grandparents. And so it's, I have that same feeling about the like the TV show, like who it, it's hard to imagine who could play like my brother or like my mother but it would be really awesome to see what they would come up with. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, a question from Laura. What is the typical path to getting a children's book published? Ooh, good question, Laura. Um, so I would say, uh, first of all, to anyone who wants to be an aspiring author or illustrator, it's really great to join the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators because they have conferences across the country, both in person and now, of course, virtually, uh, where you get to meet editors and agents. And that kind of helps you with the networking side. With that aside, um, I would say with a book, um, like a chapter book, you'd want to have a draft finish and then you would submit it to an editor or a publishing house that you think would best fit your story. A lot of times publishers don't take unsolicited work. So that means you might want to try submitting it to a literary agent first. Um, and then the same thing goes like if you wanted to do a picture book, you would want to write a, a draft for your story. Um, if you're an author illustrator for a picture book, that's even better because you can create uh, drawings and make a mock-up of your book basically in black and white. And then you would submit that to um, the agent or a publisher. Okay, that's great advice for all the future writers out there. Um, we have a question from a third and fourth grade teacher, Karen. She says that my students loved reading your books this week. They are tuned in right now. Do you have oh. any advice for young writers? Oh, definitely. Um, so I would recommend to all of you that um, first of all, read. Reading is so important because it gives you inspiration. It also shows you what is makes a good story and you know what a good sentence is. And then um, secondly, I would say. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people think they have to come up with a whole brand new original story. And a lot of times it just twists on classic stories. So, um, you know, take an old story and try to make it your own or also like even write fan fiction. Because like if you love a story and you want to try continuing that story, that's a great way to get some practice into writing as well. Like I remember when I was a kid, I used to try writing like um my own Beauty and the Beast because I love that story and I was doing my own weird version of it or also like uh, I used to write my own babysitter club books so um, take the books that are around you and use them as inspiration and try writing your own stories based off of that because you're going to be excited and that's a great way to start when you're coming up with ideas and then also carry around a little sketchbook or a journal and um, I always jot down ideas when I'm walking around and that's a great way to kind of like keep your ideas and then maybe those can turn into new stories that you've written too. All right, kids out there, that's some good advice. Okay, Angela, do you believe that your books appeal to a specific audience? And do you think about that audience when you're writing? I, you know, I would hope that it would be universal, but at the same time, I know with especially like the Stella series, um, I'm writing for those kids who might be shy or the kids who uh, whose families or themselves might come from a different place and don't fit like they quite fit in. Because uh, I know growing up, I struggled with both. You know, I really was painfully shy for a very long time. And then also I had to take speech classes. And the fact that, um, you know, there weren't that many Latino kids in my school, I that could relate to my experience because we moved to the United States when I was two. And it was just so I always felt kind of a little lost with my identity. And I think I would have loved books like this when I was a child, books that would have told me like, hey, there's other people that feel this way, too, and that you're not alone. And it's totally fine. And not only that, books that encourage and promote confidence in their heritage as well. So it's definitely, um, I'm thinking of those kids when I'm writing these books. Okay. And what do you most hope that audience will gain from reading your work? So I think it's a few things. I, I would hope um, empathy, um, because I think oftentimes, you know, people just think like, you know, they don't understand why a person is shy or they don't understand why they might struggle um, fitting in. And I think if people could empathize with the way that other people feel, I think that just, you know, it makes the world a little kinder, a little bit sweeter. Um, and then I guess we just like 
promote the idea. You know, when I was growing up, I um, they had me only speak English because I was struggling with language so much. I, I know it's very different now, and a lot of people would promote speaking two languages. So I think with the, with my books, I'm trying to encourage the idea that speaking another language, in particular Spanish, is a wonderful thing. And it's something that you shouldn't be ashamed about doing. You should be very, very proud. And speaking two languages is a very cool thing because that means you get to speak to even more people and have even more friendships. Okay, we've got one final question from Ikme Funa, who wants to know what inspired you to write Stella Diaz Never Gives Up, specifically. Specifically. Um, I guess well, it's, a, it's a combination of things. You know, it's wanting to continue that Stella character in a second book because I just knew that I had more to tell her story. Um, and it was also just seeing the growing problems with plastics in the oceans. Once I started doing my research, um, I watched um, Mission Blue, which is a wonderful documentary on uh, Netflix. And that really was inspirational. And also I would say uh, National Geographic's article and their pledge for plastics or planet, I thought was really inspiring as well because it, it really um, synthesized what is the problems with plastics in the oceans. And once I read that, that really gave me the um, one of the big plot points of um, the second Stella, so yes, never gives up. Well, that is all the questions that we have time for today. Thank you so much, Angela Dominguez, for sharing your time with us so generously. We have been speaking with Angela Dominguez, uh, whose latest book is Stella Diaz, Never Gives Up. You can find her presentation uh, on the children's stage of the National Book Festival at loc.gov slash bookfest. Thanks too to our audience out there, and I hope all of you will take the time to explore our many programs and enjoy the remainder of the National Book Festival. Music